Hello everybody, Jonathan here from AJ and Smart, and I'm just pointing the camera at Rob here. How's it going, Rob? It's going great. <laughs> So I'm in the, one of the sprint rooms here at AJ and Smart, and the video you're about to see is a clip taken from our online masterclass, and you're going to be seeing myself and Jake Knapp. Jake Knapp is the author of Sprint, the inventor of the Design Sprint. You're going to be answering a very common question about the Design Sprint. So the question revolves around designing products for businesses, like big businesses, rather than for startups, and especially for complex enterprise products. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking here at the intro, but just so you know, that's from the masterclass, just a clip taken straight out of a Q&A session from the masterclass. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good one. Hello, course member. How's it going? Hey, course member. <laughs> should we call them different, something different? To yeah, we should. That's Student. the name. Student. Hey, uh, Sprint. Uh, hey, Sprint stud. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Sprint Stud, how's it going? So I'm here with Jake Knapp, and we're gonna be answering some of the questions, some of the questions that we've been getting over the last few months of the Design Sprint course. So if we've been collecting them here in one giant Google Doc, and now that I've it got- giant. It it's is like giant, it's yeah, giant, it's really, huge. A so these are questions that came in from the community, uh, the Facebook community, and also just questions that we've been getting through emails and through the webinars and through Instagram and all this kind of stuff. So I thought, I'm just gonna answer, ask a few questions and see what comes out. Okay, we'll Get see. It from the horse's mouth. <laughs> That's funny that we both did that. Okay, Jake. Robin Danwani, uh, sorry if I'm messing with your name. Robin Danwani asks, can you use design sprints to improve parts of a complex enterprise product? Yes, you definitely can. Uh, in the sprint book, we talk about the story Flatiron Health. So this is a company who's building super complex software and I've I use this example over and over again because it's a good one. They were building this really complex software that had lots of different customers inside healthcare clinics. They had to build really complex sort of um, software that the, would be outside the clinic that they had to think about government regulators and um, insurance companies, all kinds of things. The thing is that in a sprint, you can't do all that stuff. You can't figure out all of those things. And when a problem is really big and complex like that, can actually be kind of paralyzing for the team. Like a lot of times a team who's facing a big problem like that will think like, well, we gotta sort of figure it all out before we start building. We can't really validate the product market fit for this until we've got everything figured out. And in a sprint, what you do is you just target one small piece. You know, you're gonna target one small piece, one moment, and you're gonna test that with your customers. In the end, on the last day of your sprint when you test it, you'll have maybe you know 10 or 15 minutes worth of prototype that you're showing them, and it'll be one moment for one specific customer. You can always scope anything, no matter how complicated, down to that one moment and test it. And you won't have everything figured out when you're done, but you can often build on what you learn. So if you get that one piece right after one or two sprints, then you say, okay, let's, let's now work backward. We know one piece works, we'll figure out how the rest works with that one solid bit. And having that solid bit is so much better than trying to figure it all out from scratch, which is the default way of solving problems. So sticking with the enterprise B2B sort of thing, let's, let's maybe like move into specific B2B. If you're working on a product that's not like gonna be consumer facing, it's maybe yeah. got a lot of NDAs on it, it's like hard to find user testers for that. How do you deal with projects that are not like super clear consumer apps, but maybe some like, you know, medical product that isn't going to be just out to the public? How would right. you find user testers for yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things. The first challenge, even before you get to the user testers, is you have to be able to have the context to solve the problem. You have to know enough to be able to solve the yeah. problem. And again, this is something where often I think people do a lot of upfront research and education and training because they're kind of trying to get everything perfect and right so they, mm. they feel confident solving the problem. So one of the things in the design sprint is that philosophically you're going to feel uncomfortable like you're solving the problem before you know enough. I always think if I can get the experts, whoever has the most expertise that we know that we can get in the room, if I can get them to share for 15, 20 minutes and try to tell me the most crucial things that I need to know, even if I'm coming in cold, that will give me enough to try to solve the problem. And if you try to solve it and test it with the right customers, then you're gonna learn. But getting the right customers in the room can be tricky. So what, you know, when, whenever we're talking about consumer products, it's pretty straightforward to figure out how to recruit and advertise. Yeah. You can do a lot of things. 
If you're trying to find somebody really specific, then you, I usually rely on the team. The enterprise team yeah. themselves they usually have contacts, they might have sales leads, they might have people in their network, and they'll usually know how to get in touch with those people. So think about who has connections within the company and how they can use those connections to get the right folks in the room. Great, great, great. So I hope you liked that video. I hope it helped out and I hope it answered the question about designing products for, well, I hope it answered the question about designing complex products using the design sprint process. And if you're interested in the design sprint process, you want to learn more about it, we've got a one hour, 20 minute free class. You can see the link below. And that basically goes through, oh, it's loud, it's loud today. Basically, that's a great little thing to watch if you're interested in learning more about how to run and sell your own design sprints. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, give it a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.